welcome to our 40-year-old mobile home. Well, when we bought this property, this was the only existing structure. And, you know, we really had some thoughts about, is it worth saving? It's 40 years old and kind of falling apart. But we decided, well, let's take a shot at it and not make landfill and see what we can do. So in the future, that this will be paper created over the exterior for insulation. And in, it'll actually look almost round, like an adobe. Basically, to throw one of these mobile homes away it costs about four thousand dollars to have it towed and dumped in some sort of. I don't even know how they break it down to put it in there. We've taken out all the locks on our structures here and just used digital locks. I have an RFID tag implanted in my hand, and for the home, I put in an RFID reader, which can read RFID tags. I turn on the reader, and it'll scan my tag and the door unlocks. So I don't need keys to the house. I don't even need to punch in the code. I just bring my hand. We basically looked for a sustainable material to replace a very horrible brown carpeted <laughs> room. So we ripped up the carpet and we used bamboo, which we put in ourselves. We rehung all the sheetrock. This was brown panel. We made a square window round, like little things that we felt like we can handle. <laughs> you really can't tell any longer that it's a mobile home. And it's just clean and new and uh, didn't cost a whole lot. And we didn't use materials that we felt uncertain about. We believe that there's a real surplus of materials, right? That the wood is everywhere and we just have to find it kind of thing. And it took a while for just finding the building materials because we didn't want to keep going to the hardware store and buying material. We, we hadn't done it yet. We didn't want to get into that game. Um, all the wood trim in here was found wood, donated wood, mostly like old decks, which we replaned and just put to use. People started giving us wood from their basements. You know, people started giving us uh, wood from, you know, porches they'd ripped apart, and we were even taking wood. We had a, a soil stack. If you know what a soil stack is, it's basically where the poop vents, the poop <laughs> gases come out of your house. We had a railroad tie holding it up, and our contractor kept looking at that railroad tie. He's like, oh, that is some great wood. And I'm like, it's holding up the poop stack. You know, we can't, we can't use that wood. And he, he was adamant, and we have a whole room that's done with the poop stack, uh, re <laughs> railroad tie, and it's, it's awesome. I mean, it's really good looking wood. He was right. So a lot of the wood we're using is almost, you know, 50 to 70 years old. It had already been cut down and, you know, harvested at that point. So it's probably from 200 year old trees. And wood like that just doesn't grow anymore. You know, people harvest wood at 40 years and it doesn't have the coloring, it doesn't have the density. It's just not as nice. So it's really amazing colors that we get out of it. We also kept a lot, like this is 40 year old um, mobile home built in stock furniture from 1967. And it was good enough. Things were built better 40 years ago and any off gassing Probably happened sometime earlier. Whenever you lay down a new carpet or a new wood floor even, um, there's off-gassing and that is a scent that comes out. It's uh, PVCs usually being uh, emitted, POVs. It's you know pretty nasty environmental stuff that you don't want to breathe too much of. Once you let materials sit long enough, they have off-gassed and the scents are gone and are greatly diminished. We collected a lot of salt cedar, which is a, a, a wood that grows here that's considered a pest. It's not indigenous to the area. It drinks up all the water from the Rio Grande here, and the, the state burns it. You'll drive down the highway and see them burning giant piles of this stuff because it just drinks up the water. So my mom had found this piece while we were out harvesting salt cedar for our um, paper creed. And, uh, you know, we just cleaned it up, and it's a really beautiful piece, and it you know, sort of looks like it's doing something, although it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and we use salt cedar elsewhere, too. Like, um, if you look through here, the curtains and the curtain rods, the curtain rods are salt cedar and the curtains are hemp. Like we just tried to really, you know, be as resourceful as we could and not go to the store and, and buy new materials. You redid this for about like 10 grand. Is that in materials, well, yeah, about $10,000. Yeah, $10,000, three months, one, one laborer who was pretty much full time. And 10 grand plus what it was valued at by the insurance company, which was $1,000. So technically this is an $11,000 house. <laughs> If we were to build with standard materials in a builder, it would have been at least $80 to $120 a square foot. And that's just new, ugly Home Depot look. That probably would have cost us, you know, $100 a square foot, thousands, hundred grand. Yeah. This is why the prefab world doesn't really make sense either. If you pay $200 a square foot, you know, you got a $200,000 home that was prefab. You can build anything you want for less than that in any part of the country. You know, there's a real beauty in knowing what you're working on can't be worth less. So no matter what mistake you made, it's fine. Like, it's not going to be less valuable. And I think it's a great way to pe for people to just get their hands dirty is take something that doesn't matter and work on it and see what happens. I mean, we did some goofy stuff, too. Like, we tiled the bathroom. Yeah, We've never tiled anything it. before. And, you know, some of it's pretty ridiculous. It shows. <laughs> so this was our little mosaic floor, which we just decided, let's give it a shot. 
And you know, if you really get close up, it's like there's plenty of mistakes in this. <laughs> We're pretty bad at cutting tile. I haven't even put the sink in yet. It's just kind of sitting here. <laughs> But, um, you know, who cares? This was, if you should have seen it before, you know? <laughs> and we did it ourselves, and every day we look at it and we're like, look, I did that, yay. We get a ton of support from like the older communities who've been here for multiple generations as well as the new. You know, it's food, shelter, clothing kind of thing. You know, everybody can relate. This is about living and it's about, you know, doing something yourself. They've given up hope on our generation. They're like, you guys just watch TV and eat high fructose uh -huh. stuff and you know, there's no hope for your generation. And I feel like we've really churned around a few people's opinions about, you know, the 30-something crowd. The bamboo is, has been contagious. We went to a small home in town, saw the bamboo, immediately copied it for ourselves. Other people have come here and it's been going into trailers as opposed to just throwing away the trailer. People have been remodeling them. And um, I think people are starting to realize what a viable building structure it can be. It doesn't need to be a trailer. You can seal it from the outside, redo it from the inside, give it more insulation, build it better than in the mansion or whatever homes people are yeah. making today. It's square footage, just space. You know, we watched uh, some of our friends and neighbors who also recently bought places, and, and most of the places in this town need some renovation, and they're not in that relationship with their builder where they're participating and doing the work, and because of this gap of understanding, they're kind of like hands are tied and they can't progress and the thing keeps getting stuck in the mud and they can't make good decisions because they're so distant from, distant from the process. Someone else is doing everything. So I've really witnessed their frustrations and how often they get stuck in the work can't proceed and looked at what we're doing and I feel so much freer because we're, we, we're obtaining knowledge, you know, we're involved. Yeah, we hope this place will sustain us, you know, that this you know, will be our primary income and anything else we choose to do because running a hotel is relatively low maintenance, especially when there's, you know, middle of the week, no one's coming. So we're hoping that we can generate enough revenue that we can really work on what we want to work on and not just physical labor every day, which is fun, but that's going to get old too, um, you know, and go on to whatever our topics of interest are. <music>